to Mechanicsville Baptist Church. We are so glad that each of you are here today. If we have any first-time visitors, please put your hand in the air so we can have an usher bring you an information card. We ask that you fill out this information card, and when the, usher, the offering plate comes around, just drop it on in there. There may also be some information cards on the chair in front of you. Some of them are brightly colored, so if you want to get ahead, then you can also use those and fill them out. Tonight, our services start at 4 p.m. with the prayer closet, and 5 p.m., we will have our evening worship service. This service includes great music and good word, so please make plans to come out and join us this evening. Wednesday evening services starts at 6 p.m. with our fellowship meal, and following our fellowship meal, we will have our group Bible study for all ages. This week in the shadow of the steeple, we have Miss Sarah Norton. Please take some time this week to say a prayer for Miss Sarah. And also, if you have time, please send her a note in the mail. I've been working on that song. Did you know Beethoven wrote that song? I That's why it's taken me. I've only got four bars so far, but I'm confident I'm going to get the rest of it. <laughs> so, so can I say something? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Uh, <laughs> happy anniversary, Franny and Drew. How many? I was there. Woo! I remember the day. <laughs> happy birthday to Aubrey, who I hope is enjoying herself somewhere. I miss her. And uh, happy birthday to Melina and to Noah. And since my fingers are warmed up, can we sing happy birthday? You didn't read the right one. You didn't read the right one. You got three other birthdays on there. What? I hand wrote them on the side. Oh, the no. Curve. Where, where's the one at? We have David Singleton on the 20th, okay. C.J. Norton on the 20th, and Everett Clark on the 21st. Oh, funny. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So all of y'all, here we go. Lots of August birthdays. Happy birthday to you. Tonight at 6 p.m. we will also have our fall fundraiser meeting. We have some very important information to discuss, so if you are able to help, please be sure to attend this meeting. And I'm going to hand it over to Miss Renee. Good morning. Um, Grace Moments is sponsoring a trip to the movie Saturday. We're going to see The Forge, the new Kendrick Brothers movie. Um, Priscilla Shire is in it. It's going to be really good. The cost is $14.57 for the 11 o'clock showing. If you want to give me the money, PayPal it to me, Venmo, do not cash app it to me. I'm in cash app debt. Um, I would be glad to get all the seats together. After the movie, we're planning to go eat Mexican for lunch. We would love to have anybody that wants to go to come go with us. And We've invited husbands to go along if they would like. Thank you. Do we have any other announcements from the congregation? All right. If you guys will stand and worship with us this morning.
If you got any unspoken prayer requests, if you would lift your hands, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear God, thank you for the beautiful day you've given to us today. Thank you for uh, all that were able to make it this morning. Uh, be with those who couldn't. Um, help us as we uh, kind of start a new year with school and, and other changes in our lives. And uh, just be with uh, Stanley as he brings the message this morning. We love you and thank you so much for all you've blessed us with. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
be seated. Come on, Stanley. You can stand and join us. Stand I forgot one. one. I'm sorry. Just to bow down before your throne, see your face, I'll cry out because you're holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Jesus, King of kings. Jesus. Jesus, Majesty. 
Father, we thank you for another day. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to be in your house, Lord. We thank you for worship. We thank you for praise. Father, we thank you for those who have come to worship with us this morning. We lift those up who are hurting, Lord, for those who are sick, those who maybe, Lord, they have something pressing on their mind this morning. I pray, Lord, that you would be with them. Lord God, I pray that today you would hide me behind the cross. Lord, give me the words that you would have me to say. Father, that our hearts and our minds would be open to your word. Father, we thank you for who you are, and we thank you that you love us. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning. It's good to see everyone this morning. Uh, Y'all bear with me. Y'all don't have to count how many times I take my glasses off my head. I'm trying to adjust to these new glasses, and so uh, y'all bear with me. But uh, this morning, we're going to be talking about a lifestyle of prayer and 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 for us a lifestyle of prayer if you are a christian if you're a child of god that should be something that you want to do you want to have a lifestyle of prayer you want to 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 have a prayer life in other words when people are hurting and people are sick you want people to be able to come to you and say hey i know that that person is a praying person that that person communicates with God regularly that that person is in constant communication and, and and stays on their knees praying that's what we as as Christians should be doing and far too often we fail to do that far too often we we, we drop the ball in that department um, I, I think probably last year sometime we were in the book of James but I, I as we begin the new church year for those of you that have been in church long enough y'all know that in september we we vote new people uh into uh sunday school classes and things of that nature and so i I could not think of a better time to have a service that that revolved around prayer because anytime we put people in positions it needs to be bathed in prayer it doesn't need to be just appoint this person here because they like kids well that person needs to be prayed over is that where god wants that person to be and and that goes with every other department that we have and so i I think that it it would uh do us well to make sure that as we are preparing for the upcoming church year that we are in a state of prayer so what is prayer well wayne spear in his book talking to god says human language that is addressed to god it is the means by which we express the affections needs and desires that arise from our relationship with god it is our way that we express our gratitude our worship our adoration our pain our needs our wants our worries it is the primary way that we communicate with God. I think that's a a very good definition. As I was studying, I I read this story. Uh, Most of y'all, at least the older ones, remember Paul Harvey. Uh, Paul Harvey wrote a story about this mom who went to the grocery store with her three-year-old. And she told him before they went into the grocery store, listen, we don't have the money. Don't even ask for cookies. And so as they went in the grocery store, everything was going well. She set him in the, in the uh, grocery cart, and, and as they began to shop, lo and behold, they found themselves on the cookie aisle. And as they shopped, he could not help himself, and he stood up and he said, can I please have some cookies? And she said, I've already told you, we're not going through this. We can't afford cookies. We're not getting cookies. And so she kept shopping, and after she got to the end of the store she realized that she forgot something and so she went back and guess where that item was at on the cookie aisle and so the little boy said well here's my chance i get a do-over and so he stood up in his shopping cart and he said can i please have some cookies and she said son i've already told you we're not getting cookies stop asking 
And so as she wheeled the, the shopping cart towards the front, the little boy looked around and he realized that the opportunity that he had to get cookies was coming to an end. And so as they got in line to check out, he stood up and he said, in the name of Jesus, can I please have some cookies? And everybody looked around and they kind of laughed and they applauded and they cheered. And that little boy walked out of there with 23 boxes of cookies. You know, if only we were so bold in our prayers, amen? If only we were so bold when, when we approach the throne of grace. Every one of us should be in prayer daily, not, not just uh, once a week when we come to prayer closet or, or not just, you know, when things are not going well. That, that's not when we pray. We should be praying constantly. Surveys have found that Americans understand and believe the value of prayer. Matter of fact, it says that 9 out of 10 Americans pray. That's, that's unique. Now, I don't know where some of those prayers are going, but 9 out of 10 are praying. A Gallup poll in 1994, which that seems like a long time ago to me now, but said that 94% of those who prayed regularly believed that God answered prayers. I would hope that we believe God answered prayers. Amen? And a, a, a guy named the, uh, by the name of Andy Greeley surveyed atheists and agnostics and found that one out of five of them prayed. So, so people, it is human nature to pray. Now, unfortunately, we have many that their prayer is, is directed in the wrong place. Amen? And so we need to make sure that we help people in that, in that area. We need to make sure that they understand where prayer needs to be directed, and that is only to Almighty God through Jesus Christ. So today, what I would like us to look at is I would like for us to look at how we as Christians can have a lifestyle of prayer. If you have your Bibles we are in the book of James, chapter 5. James chapter 5, we'll start in verse 13. It says, Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing psalms. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him, with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise him up, and if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Confess your trespasses to one another, and pray for one another that you may be healed. The affected fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, and he prayed earnestly that it would not rain. And it did not rain on the land for three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth produced its fruit. You know, the book of James is a practical book. It was written at a time where Christians were living in a pagan world. And, and James, uh, you know, he wanted to teach people who possessed poor understanding of things like faith and wisdom and, and morality and prayer. They didn't really have a, a, a good grasp of these things. And so James was teaching them, and he inspired them with, uh, teach, with his teachings. And, he, and in this particular case, he gives them several situations as to which that they should be praying. Today I would like to talk about five of those situations. The first James says that we are to pray during times of suffering. In the first half of verse 13, it says, Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. You know, far too often people believe that Christians are exempt from suffering. People believe that, well, if I accept Jesus, then I'm not going to have to suffer anymore, but that is not necessarily the case amen everybody in here can can attest to that what we need to understand is that our true promises from God are meant for eternity not for this lifetime as a matter of fact in 2nd Timothy three twelve, 
He actually promises the opposite. He, he promises that as Christians, we'll be persecuted. We're going to be persecuted. James knew this, and he calls for us to pray when suffering comes our way. I dare to say that m many of us, the only time we do pray is when we're suffering. How often is it that, that we, we ask people to pray for us because we're sick? We're praying for us because somebody in the family is going through something. Maybe that's the reason that you go through so many storms in your life. Maybe the reason that you're going through so many storms, thank you, brother. Maybe the reason that we're going through so many storms is because God is saying, well, the only time I ever have any communication with you is when you're going through a storm, so we're going to continue to allow you to go through these storms. Y'all don't get quiet on me. Understand that when, when, when God allows suffering in our life, the intended result for that is prayer. He wants us to pray to Him. God wants to offer things to us, but He wants us to understand that we have to be fully dependent upon Him. He wants us to ask for wisdom. He wants us to ask for comfort. But most of all, He wants to hear from us. He wants to hear from us. Imagine if, if you were married and you never communicated with your spouse. How long do you think that relationship would last? Not very long, would it? If you had a friend and you never talked to them, what happens? I know from experience with my friends in high school, I hadn't talked to some of them in 30 years. Guess what? We don't know a thing about one another because we never talk. I don't know how God will respond to your prayers, but I do know this. He will respond. Amen. He will respond to your prayers. The second way, the second situation that James gives us is he tells us to pray during times of joy. Notice the rest of verse 13. It says, is anyone cheerful? Let him sing psalms. Now, let's be honest. Most of us don't have to be told to pray when we're suffering. If we're a Christian, if we're a child of God, and we're going through something, whether it be a sickness or a death or something in our family, we're going to pray. But when we're going through happiness, when we're going through joy, we oftentimes forget about that discipline of prayer. James calls his readers to praise God when they're cheerful. When you're happy, praise God. Did you know this? Praise, remember the definition, communication with God, praise is a type of prayer. Praise is a type of prayer. Singing praise to God is a type of prayer. So for those of you, especially talking to my men, who sit there with your lip poked out while we're singing songs of praise, that, you're missing an opportunity to be blessed. You're missing an opportunity to talk to Almighty God. When you are praying, it is an opportunity to commu communicate your gratitude. I almost called Jonathan earlier this week and asked him to sing that song because that's one of my favorite songs. But it's a, it's a type of way when we're praying, we're, we're showing God our gratitude for what he has done for us. Understand that when we pray, it allows us to lean on God rather than lean on our troubles. God is greater than our troubles. God is, God is going to see you through those troubles, but when you get through those troubles, God wants to hear from you as well. He wants to hear your testimony, and he wants you to share that testimony. What James does is it reminds us to give proper glory to God. And that's because he is the source of our answered prayers. If we're not doing so, then we're falling short. We need to give credit where credit is due. Psalms 34 through 5 says this. 
sing praise to the Lord, you saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holy name. For his anger is but for a moment, his favor is for life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. How many times have you told yourself that? How many times have you told yourself, you know, this too shall pass? Weeping will come for the night, but joy will come in the morning. Understand that joy, for those of you that may not understand, we're not talking about happiness, we're talking about joy. Understanding that, that the one who controls our life controls everything. That doesn't mean we're always going to be happy, but we can always be joyful because of who he is, not because of what we're going through. Amen? If anything, we should thank God that our trials didn't last a lifetime. That, 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 that trial finally ended, amen? That trial came to an end. So what James is telling us is here that if things are good, pray. If things are bad, pray. It's just wanting communication with God. Let's talk to God. Spend time in prayer. I, I truly believe that, that the foundation of Mechanicsville Baptist Church is prayer. This church didn't last as long as it has lasted for lack of prayer. There have been prayer warriors time and time again as the years have gone by. Prayer warriors have stepped up in the church. I'm here to tell you, many of our prayer warriors are across the road over there. And many of them are getting older. It's time for some of our other people to step up and become prayer warriors to, to, to carry the load. To spend time with God in prayer. The third situation that James gives us is to pray for those who are sick. James 5, 14 through 15 says, Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise him up. So I want to start by telling you what these verses don't mean. Okay? These verses do not mean that if someone is sick and an elder in the church prays for them that they're automatically going to be healed from that physical sickness. That's not what it means. It doesn't mandate that we go around and, and put oil on everybody as, as we pray over them, promising them healing as a result of their faith. How do I know that? I know that because I know that there are people that get extremely sick. There are people that have gotten sick and died, and it hasn't been because of their lack of faith. It's just been because of the world that we live in, the sinful world that we live in. And, and if, it, if they didn't get sick for the lack of faith, then how can the opposite be true? It can't. Christians are not exempt from getting sick. Second, we are to call on the elders of the church to pray over us when we're sick. You don't have to be old to be an elder. That's not what that term means, okay? Listen, if, if, you, if your relationship, if your walk is where it needs to be with the Lord, then you're an elder in the church, and if somebody's in need of prayer, you need to grab their hand and pray for them. That's one thing that I can tell you that, that I learned from Frankie Tanner, and I'm trying to get better at it, is... If somebody needs prayer, he don't waste time and say, well, I'll be praying for you because you know what happens when you say that. You get home and everything else in life happens and you forget all about it. But if you grab their hand then and you pray, then prayer works. Amen. The third thing is that there's nothing wrong with myself or Pastor Frankie using oil as we pray over somebody. But understand, in James's day, oil had medicinal value. Oil was used for medicinal purposes. And so I'll tell you this, that, that if your prayer is not aimed in the right direction, if your prayer is not aimed to Almighty God, you can pour a bucket of Crisco on their head, but the oil is going to have zero effect 
on that person. That prayer has to be aimed in the right direction. There's no power in the oil. The power is in to whom we're praying to. You know, we have an entire list. Matter of fact, I printed it last night that we put out. And that list is full of people who need prayer. And it's very rare that I don't come to church and it doesn't matter when I update that list, more people need to be added to it within 15 minutes of me being at church. And so we live in a world where there are thousands upon thousands, millions upon millions of people who need prayer. And I believe that that's why things like Wednesday night prayer service is so important. I believe that that's why prayer closet is so important. It's not, it's not a time of gossip. It's a time of prayer. It's a time to lift those up that are in need. And I'm so thankful that we do that at Mechanical Baptist Church. I'm so thankful that I'm at a church that believes in the power of prayer. If you don't believe prayer works, all you got to do is get with Crystal over there, and she has a notebook that she keeps up with, and we're able at times we go through at the prayer closet and we look at the prayers that have been written, written down, and you can go back and look and see at how prayer has changed things as they've been prayed over. I challenge you to do that in your own life. Find you something to write, a notebook or something, write it down as you pray, and watch the power of God. The fourth situation, James tells us, is to pray for those who are in sin. Verse 15 and 16 said, And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The affected, effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Jump down, if you will, to verses 19 and 20. Brethren, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and someone turns him back, let him know that he who turns a sinner from the error of his way will save a soul from death and cover a multitude of sins. If we have a fellow Christian that we know is struggling, it's our duty to pray for that person. It's our duty to lift that person up. It's also our duty, if we have sin in our own life, to confess that sin. And, and, and it would do us good if we had an accountability partner that we confess that sin to. Now, use discernment. That don't mean you go telling all your business to everybody. You need to make sure you use discernment. But how much better is it for two people to be praying over a situation than one person to be praying over a situation. Maybe you can get a different perspective, but what James is telling us is that we need to pray for one another. We need to pray just because you're, you're a Christian, just because you're saved, baptized, and you know you're going to heaven doesn't mean that you're not going to stray from time to time. It doesn't mean that, that, that the, the world can't get out there and, and cause you to fall and stumble and go through things in your life. And so we need to be aware of that. As Christians, we need to be watching and praying for one another. If we're there for one another, I promise you this, if you were walking outside and someone tripped and fell, you would easily, I don't think you would even think about it, you would reach down to pick that person up. Then why is it that we don't do that for the one who's struggling in sin? Why is it instead we pick up the phone, the phone and say, did you hear about such and such? Did you hear about what's going on? Can you believe they did that? Instead of gossiping, pray for them. Pray for them. I didn't hear much out of you there. We have to be willing to talk to our fellow brothers and sisters of Christ, in Christ, and there has to be a, a sense of trust to one another so we can pray for one another. Because if we keep things bottled up, if we keep things bottled up, then, then what's going to happen is the problem is going to continue to get worse. Reconciliation with God comes from confession. 
James reminds us in verses 19 and 20 that the church is a spiritual hospital where believers are involved in each other's lives. We should be involved with one another's lives. We should love one another. We shouldn't hold grudges with one another. We should lift each other up. Every one of us should want the other person to have a successful walk with Christ. It's not a competition. Amen? The final way that James, situation that James gives us is to pray because it works look back up with me if you will to verses 16 and 18 16 through 18 it says the prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working elijah was a man with a nature like ours and he prayed fervently that it might not rain and for three years and six months it did not rain on the earth then he prayed again and the heaven gave rain and the earth bore its fruit Understand that all these situations that James gives to pray during is because he knows that prayer works. He knows that it, it changes people and it changes situations. How many times have we seen situations change because they have been prayed over? How many times have I gotten in the prayer closet and I've been able to scratch a name off the list because prayer worked? Because that person was now doing better. And maybe, maybe we prayed for that person and we took that person off the list and we prayed over their family because they passed away. But if they were a child of God, then their prayer was answered because they were 100% fully and wholly healed. Amen? The prayer of a righteous person. What's a righteous person? Someone who walks with him by faith. That's what a righteous person is has a great working power. And then he gives us an illustration. He tells a, a story of Elijah. And, and when he tells this story, he, he talks about all the, the, the incredible accomplishments of Elijah, but he, tell, he is telling a story of when Elijah announced judgment on Israel because they had strayed from God. If you want to read that entire story, you're welcome to. It's in 1 Kings uh, verses 17 and 18. But because Elijah prayed, it didn't rain for three and a half years. I had somebody tell me the other day after we went through that big drought that we went through. I might have saw a meme on Facebook, but they said, I don't know who prayed for the drought to end, but I wish they would pray for my bank account. Amen. We saw a bunch of rain out of that, did we not? But there's an important verse here that I don't want you to miss. That's great. That James did a great job of illustrating the power of prayer there. But there's a verse that I don't want you to miss, and that's verse 17. Verse 17 says, Elijah was a man with a nature like ours. He was a human. He was a man. His power had prayer but guess what? So does yours. Your power has prayer as well. Your, 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 your prayer can cause a great movement as well. But we have to have faith and we have to be obedient to God. Understand, however, that your power has prayer not because of you but because of him who we pray to. That's why our prayers have power. Because when we pray, we pray to Almighty God. We pray in the name of Jesus. Prayer will not change things if it's going in the wrong direction. In other words, if you pray to Buddha, or you, or you pray to Allah, or you pray to Baal, or if you pay, pray to the other 8,747, and I looked that up, that's not a made-up number, okay? 
8,747 other false gods, then your prayer means absolutely nothing. But when you pray to Almighty God, things change. We pray because it works. Guys, we should be excited about this. We get excited when we're able to pick up the phone and have a conversation with a friend. Why can't we be so why can't we be equally as excited about a conversation with God? We need to be excited about that. We need to be excited that 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 the creator of heaven and earth has opened up a, a way for us to communicate with him at any time at the drop of a hat. I can tell you this, if you don't have a prayer life, life, it's impossible to live the Christian life. You cannot live a, a, a fruitful Christian life if you do not have a life of prayer. You have to spend time with God. You need to pray more often. Peter Marshall says this. He says, Lord Jesus, forgive us for thinking that prayer is a waste of time and help us to see that without prayer all else that we do is a waste of time as our girls and Stan start to walk forward I want to tell you a story and I, I pray that this story will be as impactful as on you as it was to me I was reading a story of this lady she was a well uh, uh, she was in Wales and she didn't have any electricity. And so she, she went to great expense to make sure that she had electricity. She went to great expense to make sure that the electric company knew where she lived. I kind of, I'll be honest with you, as I was reading the story, Casey, I was thinking of your house and getting cable way off the road. And, you know, they got to go way off the road, but she was, she was needing power. She was needing electricity, and so she paid lots of money to have electricity run to her home. And after a few months, the electrical company started to notice that she hardly had any electrical bill. That would be nice, amen? They started to notice there was hardly any electricity being used. And so they sent someone out there to check her box, her meter box. And so as he looked at it, he noticed that everything was working properly. He walked in the house, he knocked, or he knocked on the door, and the lady opened the door. And he said, um, I couldn't, we can't help but notice that you're not using your electricity very often. Is everything okay? And she said, oh, yes. She said, we are satisfied. Everything is wonderful. She said, every night when the sun goes down, we turn the light switch on so that we can see how to light all the candles, and then we turn it back <laughs> off. <laughs> Say, well, Pastor, why are you telling us that story? Well, you see, that lady was connected to a power source that she wasn't taking advantage of. She was connected to a power source that could have helped her in life. Amen. She was connected to a, to a power source that could have made her life better. How many of us as Christians are connected to a power source that we don't even use? How many of us understand that Almighty God is the most powerful source that we can go to, and too many times, instead of talking to Him and connecting with Him, we're going to a friend, or we're going to someone who can't help us in the least little bit. As we stand to sing, I want you to think about that story, and I want you to think about what would happen in your life if you truly realize the power source that you were connected to if you truly took advantage of that source if you truly took advantage of the opportunity to spend time 
with Almighty God. And maybe this morning, you have no idea what I'm talking about. Well, I can tell you that if you give your life to Jesus, it'll be the greatest decision that you ever make. I'm here. Love to pray with you. Maybe you want to grab the hand of a friend or a loved one and you want to pray with them. Whatever your need is, this altar is open.
everybody good? Amen. It's been a great morning. It's been good to see everyone. I pray that this week you would, I would challenge you this week to work on your prayer life. Work on your time with God. Spend more time with Him. Just try it. Just try it. Maybe, maybe you say, well, you know, I pray from time to time. No, I challenge you to pray daily. To pray daily. Write it down. Take, take, take a page out of Crystal's book. Write it down. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, I thank you for this opportunity. I thank you, Lord, for each and every family that's here this morning. Lord, for those that are not here, we, we ask that you would bless them as well. Lord, I pray that every one of us would do what we could to strengthen our prayer life. Lord, I pray that, that this week, Lord, that we would pray for one another that we would pray for those that are sick. I challenge each and every person in this room to grab a prayer sheet and pray over those names. Just give you the opportunity to work. Lord, I pray for this church, the upcoming events that are, that are around the corner. I pray for them. We pray for the nominating committee as they begin to put people in place Lord, I pray that you would put people in a place that would allow our church to grow and to glorify you. Father, we love you. We thank you for all the blessings that you give us each and every day. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.